It's my pleasure to introduce you to uh, a person who creates highly interactive motion sensor technology, uh, incredible light and sound generating objects and interfaces. And he's all the way here from Bloomington, Indiana. This is Andrew. Instruments and then um, uh, just kind of exploring what comes out of them. This is called Ecotone, and um, I'm actually uh, using uh, this software called Pure Data uh, and a lot of different synthesis techniques, and uh, just kind of improvising with uh, sound and movement. This actually is, uh, I'm using this uh, open uh, platform uh, microcontroller called Arduino, which is a way of connecting sensors uh, and uh, getting information in and out of the computer. And uh, I'm using a, a proximity sensor, uh, an accelerometer, and uh, then just buttons and knobs. And obviously there's uh, LED uh, lights in, inside of this. Um, some of the uh, more interesting things are these uh, actually are um, uh, little police cars, uh, toy circuits from the dollar store, uh, which I sort of uh, hacked and I removed the resistor and put a, a photo resistor so as the uh, uh, light uh, changes, uh, strikes the photo resistor, it changes, it varies the resistance based on the light uh, hitting the photo resistor. And so that's sort of what's creating the, the different, I guess, pitches. So it's changing the sample uh, 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 rate of the little micro uh, sample chip. Okay. What, what's your inspiration? Where did it come from? For your fascination, or what intrigues you? What, what, where did this come from? If you don't mind me asking. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I guess the sort of uh, really again thinking of how to expand a palette of uh, sort of a musicality of uh, visual vis vision and movement, and you know, sort of thinking of, of this kind of history of, of visual music. Uh, you know, experimental animation, uh, you know, uh, people who sort of just uh, play with like pattern and color, abstraction, and uh, so that's um, a little bit like Oscar Fischinger and um, <laughs> Len Lai, and, and, uh, but also, um, uh, I guess there's sort of a, I don't know, kind of a quirkiness um, to some of this stuff, it's sort of a playful approach. Uh, so I'm thinking, thinking a lot about playing and, and um, you know, just enjoying, uh, you know, the the process and, and also embodiment, so sort of feeling, you know, myself in the, uh, you know, sort of embodied in the uh, process of making you know, sounds and images. I know that there's a lot of different uh, sound artists that do improvisation and different positions that they do improv. But you kind of bring it to a level where you actually talk to the audience in that you know, sort of modernized uh, performance. Can you explain how you got to that level or why you wanted to bring the audience to the um, Sure. I, I actually uh, I kind of show these as an installation, and they're sort of uh, 
part of kind of a little table where people's the idea was you know the table was uh, you know, this apparatus I suppose where people could come together around it sort of share and um, so I think that was kind of a little bit of the inspiration and and so I I, I thought how do I bring that into uh, you know a performance and so I just started distributing things uh, out to the audience and. Uh, it's sort of just been evolving like that. Okay, pass one more time. sort of see the, the front of the camera right here, so uh, you can sort of point it, and as you uh, uh, point the camera, you can sort of hear there are different vectors on the screen triggering uh, uh, different sounds. software and um, I really actually like the fact that you know I can just say uh, you know have students just download it and they can start building stuff and they don't have to worry about you know paying eight hundred dollars typically just do performance or do you find that your art is better as an installation um, I actually I kind of like playing around I mean I guess very similar, you know, like sort of playing with practice, you know, and moving between sort of spaces and, and you know, the temporality of uh, performance. Temporality? Temporary? Temporary? Temporality, yes. Temporality. Right. Write that one down. Yeah, so I think there's a tension, you know, they kind of sort of. Uh, Eat off of each other. In, in full, the practices kind of inform each other, and and then you know there's challenge too. It's like how do I take this and bring it into? How do I take something from a performance that's interesting and bring it into a space that's kind of fixed, or you know vice versa? I think um, can be kind of uh, on you know or intellectually stimulating, yeah. creatively stimulating um, uh, act. I just wanted to say, like, this is the first time I've ever been to like, an event like this, but I really love the progression that you guys are doing and making art a much more interactive experience. I mean, I've been to, I went, I was in New York recently and I went to a couple of galleries and, like, there'd be lights on the floor and stuff, and, like, obviously you can walk through it, but they, there'd be security guards being like, oh no, you can't go through that. And it's just sort of annoying. It's like one of those things where art's supposed to be interactive. Like, if you can't have a relationship with the art, then what are you doing there? And so I really like art that, it, that goes out and grabs you and really brings you into it, and that's what you guys have been doing, and it's really awesome. I just want to say good job. I would just like to say, if I, if I can, adding to her comment, that it's really extraordinary what both of you are doing, and the curator of the Sound Bay Festival, and I'm so, and I deeply appreciate it, and I'm, it's mind-bending, and it's awe-inspiring, it's beautiful, and I think it's very important. So thank you all three.